So uh, I knew Craig had to go first because uh, you did a great job, not only presenting IPAD, but introducing Neuronet. Uh, and I think um, before I go into Amipad, this is a much shorter presentation. Uh, I just put out one thing. I mean, all the Neuronet Scientific Committee we met at the beginning of this week. And one of the things that we all were in agreement is that we have to generate a list of IMI assets that have been developing. And, you know, Craig has shown you already five assets through IPAD because that can be leveraging with future European projects or even projects from anywhere uh, and that is there that has been created so the thing that we don't want it to happen is that you know we finish the IPA five-year period IPA is finished everything is gone stop and we forget in two years that will be really be a shame so I mean we should keep this in mind always in all our neural net talks we are trying to work together to generate a full let's say roadmap of assets that are already there for all of us to use and, 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 and use in research. So now I go into Amipad. Amipad is amyloid imaging to prevent Alzheimer's disease. Uh, as you, this is another, obviously, IMI uh, project. It's a smaller one, uh, but still, it's 27 million projects, so it's, it's quite big as well. Um, it's a smaller consortium, as you can see, uh, not as large as, as the one we have in IPAD. And there are many common partners in IPAD and AMIPAD. Because at the very beginning, uh, AMIPAD was launched as a sister project to IPAD uh, because IPAD didn't have amyloid imaging at the time. So since that was one of the things lacking, you know, this other IMI project came up and, you know, it was a good way to get amyloid imaging into IPAD. But uh, AMIPAD wanted to go beyond just providing amyloid imaging to IPAD in the sense that that is a very clear objective which is linked with uh, risk stratification but there are other objectives that uh, there are very important in the context of amyloid imaging probably many of you are aware of the ideas studies in the US which is a study that is bringing the diagnostic value of amyloid imaging in clinical care so then uh, AMIPAD developed two big studies, which are done by War Package 3 and War Package 4. War Package 3 is in charge of what we call the diagnostic study. And, and that is very similar to the IDEAS 1, and I will get into it with a little bit more detail in the next slides. So basically, we want to provide value and we want to show the usefulness of amyloid imaging in uh, creating a diagnosis, a clinical diagnosis. So that's the whole point of the diagnostic study. Diagnostic certainty, patient management. What is the value of amyloid imaging? Then we have what we call the prognostic study. The prognos prognostic study is very much linked to IPAD, but now it's linked to other cohorts, as I will explain, because we want to understand the very beginning of amyloid deposition, the very beginning of the natural history of Alzheimer's disease, and how that interacts with other markers that we may, may be measuring CSF, like IPAD has, etc. So it's two completely different studies, and then, obviously, both of them can share disease modeling. Disease modeling can be performed in this cohort and it can be performed in this cohort. So we will probably be uh, using both cohorts to try to do disease modeling at different stages of the disease. So just, you know, the diag diagnostic study, we are aiming 900 uh, patients from memory clinics. Uh, you will see that we are doing uh, quite well. 900 will have baseline, 300 will have follow-up PET. So in total, we are aiming for over 1,000 scans, 1,200 scans. The prognostic natural history study, we are aiming to do 2,000 baseline PET imaging in a very early stage of the disease, and 1,000 of them will have follow-up. So in total, 3,000. In total, the whole uh, AMIPAD study is aiming to do over 4,000 PET imaging study. Some of them are going to be dynamic, which is much more costly. So the first study, the diagnostic study, as I said, the aim is to determine the impact of amyloid PET imaging on the diagnostic thinking in the workup of patients, not only with MCI and dementia, we decide to innovate a little bit. And I have to say that I think, you know, usually Europeans, we always take the first step in innovation and, and we are more brave in going to early stages of the disease. So we decide to include this population with SCD, uh, subjective cognitive decline, those 
fulfilling the what we defined years ago by the SCD International Working Group, SCD plus criteria. So those are going to be part of that. So we want to test the hypothesis that an etiologic diagnosis with very high confidence is reached earlier if you add amyloid imaging into your diagnostic workup. Then we have secondary objecti objectives like checking on confidence, patient management, HTA, etc. And the most novel thing is that we did a randomized design and that we included SCD plus participants. So this is the design. Patients come in with cognitive complaints, then obviously they have a clinical workup, the usual clinical workup, which means you know what we usually do in our clinics, cognitive workup, MRI, blood, etc. We come with a syndromic diagnosis, which may be SCD+, MCI, or early uh, dementia that we think may be related to Alzheimer's disease, and then they are randomized. All this population is randomized to three different groups. The first group gets early PET. Within four weeks, you do the amyloid imaging. Second group, PET imaging is delayed for eight months. Third group, the physician chooses want to perform amyloid imaging. So we are going to be comparing the diagnostic confidence here with here and here, obviously with here, which if you don't do the imaging, we assume it is not going to change. And we are going to seek the answers. What do physicians prefer as well? And then we are going to be checking also on uh, other measures like HTA, etc. So right now we have already 523 patients randomized, which is quite good because we are aiming for 900. So we do believe that maybe in five, six months time, we'll have finished recruitment. Uh, secondary endpoints, uh, diagnosis and confidence, time to communicate, and etiological diagnosis. And etiological, obviously, we means biomarker base because we can check in the proteins deposit in the brain. So we think that brings us close to uh, the pathology behind. Uh, changes changes in diagnostic confidence over time, likelihood of patient symptoms due to Alzheimer's disease, and changes over time in the use of amyloid in free choice arm. I mean, when do we want to use that uh, amyloid if you can choose? Then patient, patient management measure, health economic outcomes. Here we are trying to get some health economic outcomes. Uh, when we design this, we are very much interested. We are always very much concerned because the time frame is very short. So I'm always very, uh, I mean, I'm not convinced we are going to be seeing differences uh, because sometimes it's, it's really complex to capture that in such a short period of time. But still, we have that there. And then we are going to be using quantitative imaging to see if that gives an added value to the visual uh, read. As you know, amyloid imaging now right now is approved for the use of uh, the diagnosis of people with cognitive impairment. And the visual read is what is being approved to be used. So we want to check if quantitative if quantitative imaging tell that apart from the visual read. So this is uh, recruitment. I mean, uh, as I said, already 523. We have mostly the MCI group almost done because we have to do 300 per each arm. But, you know, we are doing quite well with SCD as well, which is, you know, that means that people are coming earlier to our clinics. But then we go to the other study. Um, I don't want to be late because I, I pressure Cray to be on time, so I don't want to be late. I'm not being on time. So, so, you know, that's early diagnosis, the value of PET imaging for early diagnosis, for diagnosis, but also, uh, and very much linked with EPAD, we are very interested in, you know, not only this, which is what we are doing in the diagnostic study, but what is happening here, and more than that, what is happening very early on. And this is the second study that we have in place. The second study is really risk profiling and understanding the value of amyloid imaging in this risk profiling and modeling. So the aim is to understand the role of amyloid PET imaging in predicted progression within each domain of the IAD risk probability spectrum. Right now, we are very used still when we talk about amyloid imaging on you know having a positive versus a negative scan. Now that we have been working with very early uh, participants, because some of them do not have any symptoms, we are really being able to measure the very early beginning of amyloid accumulation. And just to give you an idea, 
Usually a visual read uh, in positive in an Alzheimer patient with dementia is around 100 centiloids. A very early uh, scan, positive scan, usually is around 35 to 50 centiloids. We have already done some work and we have been able to show that 12 12 centiloids is probably the earliest amount of amyloid deposition that we can measure. So that gives us what we call the gray zone, a spectrum from 12 to 30, uh, 35 centiloids, which people already are starting to accumulate amyloid, but the amount of amyloid is still quite low. So those are the people that actually are around here. They are accumulating, obviously, this is 100 centiloids, this is around 50, but these people already are accumulated amyloid and many things are happening regarding all other physiopathological cascades. So these are all the kinds of things that we want to be studying in the prognostic and natural history study. So right now uh, we have 320 participants involved. We realized this started as an EPAD uh, sister study somehow, but we realized that probably if we want to do things on time, we needed to accommodate other similar studies into the prognostic studies, and then we are invited what we call non ipad cohorts, and these are the three first that are being incorporated, the MIF-AD, uh, this is the twins study in Amsterdam, our own Alpha Plus study from uh, BBRC and Phase HIV from Fundacion ACE. So with this, what we are aiming is to incorporate in a faster way other studies that has been developed very similarly to EPAD, so we can uh, really on time be able to fulfill our uh, cognitive study. Because as I said, we really want to focus on this gray zone, on those participants that have between uh, 12 to 50 centiloids. Obviously, we'll have people beyond that and, and we'll have people completely amyloid negative because we need those, let's say, control or, or groups to compare with. But, you know, this is probably will be the largest study of people included uh, in with of gray zone participants this early. We are going to be doing dynamic scans and we are going to be having longitudinal PET imaging in, in at least 50% of those participants. So, again, uh, just insisting of what I have been uh, saying. Right now, uh, as I said, we have like uh, 320 participants, but you know we have to realize that when we look at the numbers, really, we mainly started here in January this year, so over this uh, 10 months we have included uh, these participants, now we are included all these new cohorts, so likely we are looking forward 2020 to go, you know, over a thousand participants for sure. I mean, I mean, at the end of 2020, we'll be close to the 2000. That's what we are uh, thinking of. So, early diagnosis, this is the AMIPA diagnostic study. We'll see the positive and negative predictive value in real life setting. And, and we insisted in having a real life setting for the diagnostic study. That's why those were patients coming into memory clinics. They did the usual workup and then we randomized into the AMIPAD trial part. Uh, we will see if there is an actual change in, in management. And um, obviously, we are look, looking for cost effective implement, implementation and reimbursement possibilities. The prognostic study will check on the value of quantitative. PET in very early stages, mainly preclinical, who is at most risk of developing dementia and when can we intervene and how can we best measure the impact of treatment. That obviously we think that's going to be leveraging in the future with trial design. This is the consortium. This picture was taken in Berlin. Uh, we recently have another GA and I think we were all very happy to see that you know work is progressing nice. And with this, I thank you, and I can take a few questions. Thank you. <laughs>